Hey there guys, so for tonight I chose to image something very special since this uh, deep sky object is not uh, imaged very often. Are you sure about that? And I'll just uh, let you guess uh, which one it is. that the Orion Nebula is the most photographed uh, deep sky object. I still think that it's quite uh, satisfying to return to it uh, over and over again or if you are just starting in astrophotography uh, this target will really bring you a lot of joy and I know that there's a lot of debate that the Orion Nebula despite its brightness uh, is not very suitable for beginners since it has a really high dynamic range from the very bright center in the trapezium to the very faint dust uh, around so at even relatively short exposures uh, you can burn out the core of the nebula but even if you do just that uh, you can fix it with uh, taking a few shorter exposures and some editing which I will show uh, at the end of the video and even if you are just starting to take your first um, astro images uh, you shouldn't be discouraged by everything I just said because I remember when I took my first image of the Orion Nebula I got immediately hooked and so excited that uh, I didn't even bother getting images to the computer and processing them. I just basically showed everyone the back screen of my camera. So what I'm trying to say is you will get a tremendous amount of satisfaction imaging your Orion Nebula. And this is what you really want in the beginning. You want it to be fairly easy and get a result immediately, even if it's not the best. Because trust me, you really don't want to image targets where you take uh, 300 or 600 second exposures and uh, barely see anything plus you really don't need to have a modified camera for this target so take advantage of that and just go outside and enjoy the hobby okay but if you want to get the full range of the Orion Nebula let me show you how I take my exposures so in back RTOs I got my sequence set up to take uh, 5 exposures of 45 seconds 5 of 90 seconds and the rest I'm taking uh, 600 second exposures now I already collected uh, quite some time on the Orion Nebula and initially I wanted to dedicate uh, quite a lot more time on it to get uh, the very faint dust around it but lately we have so much bad weather and I just really want to finish this project so I'll take everything I get tonight and uh, move on to processing and uh, call it done for now maybe I'll dedicate it some more time in a few weeks or so but the good thing is that we are very close to new moon and uh, the sky tonight uh, looks very clear so I might get some good data and I wanted to ask if uh, any of you know where I could get a good uh, weather app and I don't mean an app where I can check the weather I need an app where I could order clear skies more often okay so one last thing uh, I got asked if I could show my PhD graph so I will pull it uh, somewhere on the side for a bit but I talked too much already so I think it would be a good idea if we jump to the computer so I can show you how I combine uh, all of my exposures to get uh, the high dynamic range unless you want to hang out here a bit more especially now that it's getting so fresh and cold I actually don't mind it that much a few moments later actually I do so let's go inside <laughs> Okay, so there's a lot of ways you can do this process and uh, I'm going to show you how I do it uh, mostly with luminosity masks but uh, without wasting your time let's just uh, jump into it. Okay so I imported all of my stacked images in Photoshop and uh, this is my 600 second exposure, this is my 90 second exposure and my 45 second exposure. And my first step will be to correct the white balance and uh, then I will just align the images but uh, I will skip this ahead so I don't bore you with uh, the simple stuff. Now here I will just turn off the 45 second exposure, go to the 90 second exposure 
and decrease the opacity to 50%. Hit the Ctrl and T. And sadly there is no tool in Photoshop that could uh, help you to align uh, these images. So you will have to do it manually. And this is a very simple process, just uh, make sure that you don't uh, change the scale of your image. And I'll do the same with the 45 second exposure. Ok so that's done, now uh, you will have to decide uh, when you want to combine uh, all of your exposures. So I like to do this very early and that's uh, just a personal choice uh, because all I want to do is to keep uh, the stars in the trapezium and I don't like to talk bad about uh, other images. But uh, if you look at uh, the image from the Orion Nebula from the Hubble Space Telescope, to me it just looks flat so it's too evenly illuminated. And I know that you can see a lot of structure but uh, this is definitely not a look that I'm going for. So I like to stitch my exposures uh, very early and stretch them together. And like I said all that I care about is to keep uh, the stars in the trapezium visible. And the first way that I'm going to show you is uh, how to use the selection tool in Photoshop. And uh, then I'll use the easy panel, but you can basically get the same result with uh, both of those tools, except later in processing I'll definitely use the easy panel, like I showed you in my processing video. Ok, so now first let me turn off the 45 second exposure, set this one back to 100%, let's go to select, color range, let's go to midtones, and again everything that's white will be selected, the rest uh, will stay unselected. And this is really the part where you want to process by your own taste. So let me move this slider a bit more. Ok, so I think this is fine. I'm going to hit OK. Now go to select, modify and expand. So I'm going to expand that for 20 pixels. Nope, too much. Go back, Ctrl Z. Select, modify and expand. Let's say 5 pixels. Ok, so I'm going to keep that, we'll go to the lasso tool and I'll deselect the rest, so hold ALT Kind of like this Ok, now go select, modify and I'm going to feather it for a bit, so let's say 5 pixels also uh, Maybe I'll deselect this part too Ok, now hit Ctrl C and V I'm going to hide this layer And I will have to move this part a bit Decrease the opacity Let's go straight into it Now I'm going to lower the opacity a bit I think that that works Get your razor tool Make sure you got the hardness set to zero I'm going to remove that part Ok I think that works Ok, now let's go to the 45 second exposure Also set the opacity to 100% And again go select Color range Ok, so I'll select a bit more And then I'm going to raise it later Hit ok Now here I really want the trapezium So I'm going to go to the lasso tool again Hold shift and select that and I'm just going to deselect a couple of those stars My god, so professional. Ok, and again, Ctrl C and V. To hide this layer. Lower the opacity a bit. And align it. Ctrl T. Here I'll keep it at 50% and go back to the eraser tool 
make my brush a bit smaller. And just remove the edges. And I think that that's about it. So if I turn off both of those layers. Okay, I think I have to increase the opacity a bit here. Yeah, I will keep it at 70% and I will show you how to do it with the easy panel. So I will turn off uh, both of those layers, bring back those two, Let me turn off that one. And again, go to the easy panel, hit the mid tones, go through the masks. I think I like this one, so let's go to image, adjustment and levels and let's increase the contrast a bit. I don't want the dark spots to be selected. Let's get a bit of the bright areas. Okay, I'll select that, hit OK. Make selection. Now again, select, modify and I'm going to feather it for 5 pixels is fine. And again, Control C and V inside the bottom layer. Lower the opacity a bit. Control T. Set it to 100%. Again, the eraser tool. I'm going to erase that part. Decrease the opacity a bit. Now let's go again to the 45 second exposure. The same mid tones. Let's go to the masks. Okay, I'll select this one image adjustment and levels. I'll leave it like that, hit OK. Make the selection and again go to the lasso tool so I can select the trapezium. Hold shift and circle around. And let's go to select, modify and feather it for a bit. Five, yeah, five pixels is fine. Okay. And again, control C and V. Hide the bottom layer. Select this one, control T. Hit OK. I will leave the opacity to 100 and again the eraser tool. Make the brush a bit smaller. Now let me click through a bit so you can see the differences. So you can see you basically get the same result uh, either way you do it. But again, this is the part where you will have to make choices by yourself, uh, dependent on uh, what you like. And I hope that this video will be some help to you. But uh, if you have any questions, just uh, leave them in the comment section. And I would like to thank you for watching and see you again next time. Take care, guys. Bye.